appliances. We talked about uh, being able to help kids and, and change things. But one thing you really made a, a point to me was, as a parent, if we have a child that has a condition like this, uh, and we know about it, obviously, if people don't know, there's nothing we can do, but we have a choice to make. We can either help them get treatment now, and you said after six, seven months, eight months, we can cor they can correct the problem so for the rest of their life they don't have a challenge, or allow them to grow, go out on their own, and they'll spend the rest of their life working to fix it. Why, as parents, do you think more aren't bringing their kids in to get fixed? I think the parents are bringing them in to get fixed, but it just depends on whether those dentists have been trained to evaluate those problems and whether the orthodontists that they refer them to want to treat early. Some orthodontists prefer to wait until all the permanent teeth are out. I'm of a different school of thought. Like the Europeans, I like to treat early. Why not solve the problem when the patient's actively growing then try to deal with it once they're, all their permanent teeth are out? I'm into early treatment. Is just having orthodontics done enough to ensure you don't get these problems? I would say no. Um, orthodontics is just basically straightening the teeth and it, it's important for orthodontists or general dentists, whoever's doing the orthodontics, to make sure that they have a healthy temporomandibular joint. If no attention is paid to the temporomandibular joint and you just give straight teeth, some of those patients could have problems later on. The, pro the patients that have the worst problems are the deep overbites and the jaws that are retrusive. Okay. Weak chins. With that being said, let's pull up your first case that we're okay. going to go over here. Now, tell me about this little girl. She is 10? 10 years old. And I mean, I, until I started talking to you, I see half the kids at school where my children go to school have this profile. Yes. I mean, is this a pretty... This is a very serious problem in our society. Most kids have an underdeveloped jaw, and they need to be brought forward when they're actively growing. So that little girl would probably have some jaw problems. She could have a ring in the ears. She could have headaches. Now, and we talked, you said neck pain. Yes. Okay, she came in because... So you, she had neck pain, was that one of yes, the? Yes, yes. And in a young child, unless they just had a traumatic injury, they shouldn't normally have neck pain. No, they shouldn't. The soreness, anything like that. So yeah. take me through what you did for her. Well, basically, because she, her jaw is retrusive. That means just back. Back, because okay. her jaw is back too far. Her, she's got forward head posture. So her head tips forward, and for every one inch that her head tips forward, it puts, it puts 10 pounds of pressure on the muscles in the neck. Okay, let's look at the picture real quick. Uh, you told me that their ears should pretty much line up right over their shoulders. Yes. And you can see her shoulders put her ear about, you know, halfway back of her head. Maybe four inches. Okay, so that means that her neck is holding up an additional 30 to 40 pounds in weight. That's right. Which is why it's sore. That's right. Okay, so what, would you, what, what did you do to help her? When I bring her jaw forward, bring the next picture up. Okay. When I bring her jaw forward, you're okay. going to see her head uprights over her cervical spine. Her head went right up. So I brought her jaw Hold forward. Hold on, I'm going to back up to that first picture for yeah, just a second. It's kind of <laughs> her head seems to be almost angled down. That's right. And then the second picture, uh, we'll, we'll put them up there side by side. You can definitely see that her head is up. It's square. Her jaw is now out to her lips. And you're telling me this is all because? All because I used a functional appliance to bring her jaw forward. And the cause was her lower jaw was deficient. I mean, if you even look at her eyes, her eyes look more alive. I oh, mean, no. she has... Well, plus self-esteem. You know, if you have a weak chin, the kids will make fun of you because then if you have a weak chin, you get buck teeth because there's a difference between the upper and lower teeth. It's called an overjet. And so the kids make fun of them, calling them buck teeth, and so their self-esteem suffers. So, so, so I'm, But I'm talking about the reason I use this is not just for self-esteem but also to help their health. Because remember, when I bring the jaw forward, I help the TMJ problem, help the jaw problems, because many jaw problems, and we'll show some videos later, are of the jaw being back too far. Okay. So I'm bringing the jaw forward. I'm also bringing the tongue forward, which is going to help prevent snoring and sleep apnea. Because when the tongue falls back and blocks the airway, that's what causes the snoring and the sleep apnea. Okay, now you brought this little girl's jaw forward using just an oral appliance. Problems like are gone. Headaches are gone. Neck problems are gone. She's a happy little girl. And then I'll put the brace on and straighten her teeth. So I fix the bone problems first. So you fix a structural problem. Structural problem first, then I fix the teeth. Then you fix the teeth. All right, let's go to your, I believe, your next. He was seven. Seven, seven years, years old. old. And for sure, those kids are making fun of him. I mean, you can see his jaw is way back. What do you do for him? I bring his jaw forward with, a, with one of those twin block appliances like I showed you earlier. Same thing? Same thing. And this is this, is this kid? This is him about uh, 10 months later. Looks like a completely different individual. 
Uh, Nobody's making fun of him now. Now, sh let's take a look at his teeth real quick, and you can tell me, kind of tell me what's going on here. Is this, this is the picture of his teeth? You can see that his uh, back teeth are nine millimeters behind his upper front teeth. So now this is looking at him from the side. That's right. The two teeth on the right-hand side that are pointing almost straight out are his... Top teeth. Top two front teeth. Yeah. That's incredible. And with the, now you, you, the oral appliance moves the jaw. Now, did this kid have orthodontics also? Yes. After, after I moved his jaw, you'll see, there's the position his jaw is in after okay. uh, 12 months. Then I just wait till all the rest of his teeth erupt and then put braces on and give him straight teeth. But now his, you've brought that lower mandible out to match where it should be. And That's then you, right. And then we've brought the teeth back to some degree. Yeah. We brought the lower jaw forward. Okay. And we fixed the structural problem because he had a bone problem. His lower jaw was deficient. You can't fix lower jaw deficiencies with just braces. You have to use functional appliances. And I've been doing this for the last 25 years. And, and I really like the results I get. And, and a lot of parents, the ones I talk to, want their children to be treated early. They don't want to wait till problems develop when they're more expensive to treat later on. All right, Doc, we're almost out of time. But you, with TMJ, you mentioned it. Take a moment and just explain what it is and, and, and how it works. It, it's basically a, a dysfunction of your jaw joint, yes? The public call it TMJ. Right. But the medical and dental profession call it TMD, temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Okay. It's a, dis it's a disorder of the TMJ. All right, you brought a clip. Let's take a look at it real quick and kind of explain to me what it is. This is a, 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 fo a clip of, that's a jaw joint, right? That, right that's in, a jaw right joint. The bottom is your jaw bone, your mandible that you chew with, and the yeah. top is the, the yeah, joint it sits in. Right. Now, okay, so under normal conditions, it just kind of goes back and forth nice and what's the orange part? The orange part's the disc. That's the protective piece of cartilage between the two bones, which um, allows the, the, the job to move nice and smoothly okay. and protects the two bones. Okay. And, and then the, the yellow part is the uh, nerves and blood vessels behind the jaw. And uh, you don't want that jaw to go back too far. And that's the problem with those little kids with those uh, buck teeth. Their jaw's back too far. And that's why you have to move them forward with those functional appliances. So if it goes back too far, it presses on the blood vessels and the nerves back there, kind of like stepping on a garden hose, shuts off the blood, so they get the headache, they get the tense, their head goes forward to try to relieve that, and then they start getting those neck problems and things. Right. So over time, now, is this a progressive problem? Will it continue to get worse? Yes, it is. There's five stages of uh, disc displacement. We'll show the disc going out of position shortly. Okay. There's, uh, now we, we notice the disc is out of position now, and you okay. can see the patient is is going on to the disc. Uh, see how much thinner it is. Right. And when they go onto the disc, that's the click you hear. So if the clicking is bad, if you hear any noise in the joint, it's bad. Any noise in the elbow, any noise in the shoulder is bad. Noise here is also bad. Eventually, it breaks through. Breaks through, then you get a perforation, and you hear a cracking noise. Call it crepitus. Not good, because then it's bone on bone, and then the top of the jawbone starts to wear down. And those patients are in a lot of pain because frequently, too, uh, what happens is the nerves and blood vessels get very compressed on that. Can you, can you help them also? They're more difficult, but we can help them. We are out of time. If everybody could take home one message from today about sleep apnea or TMJ, what would you want it to be? Get your kids in early. Any child that has buck teeth or has their jaw too far back, get them in early. Get them wearing a functional appliance. Get that jaw forward. What if your kid snores? Well, that'll help too because, and get the, and look at the adenoids and tonsils. Get those adenoids and tonsils out. When you open your child's mouth up and look in it, should you be able to see down? Yes. You shouldn't see two meatballs at the back of the throat. Or the, or the tongue and the drape meeting together. Right. All right. I want to thank you for coming in. You've been it's, very, it's been very important. It's been a pleasure, important. Mike. Yeah, thank you. It's good. You've been watching Medical News Network. I'm Mike Wigenstein. For future information on this subject or any other, please visit our website at medicalnewsnetwork.info. Until next time, I wish you good health. Thank you.